So long as these problems are not solved, so long as ignorance and poverty remain on earth, these words cannot be useless. WOR and the Mutual Network present the third of seven broadcasts based on Victor Hugo's compelling novel, Les Miserables. Orson Welles, distinguished young author, actor, and director, plays the role of Jean Valjean in this presentation, which he has adapted especially for radio. And Mr. Wells is also heard as he reads from the book itself. Each episode pictures a development in the progress of Valjean, and last week introduced Fontaine and Javert. Les Miserables, Part 3, the episode which is called The Trial. I gave you the candlesticks that you stole from me. I have purchased your soul. I withdraw it from the spirit of perversity, and I give it to Almighty God. So spoke the Bishop of D. to a thief and a galley slave named Jean Valjean. And from the moment he left him, Jean Valjean was another man. He was Monsieur Madeleine. In time, he was the mayor of Montreux. He had sold the bishop's silver, keeping only the candlesticks. And with this money, he made more. He was established in Montreux, the owner of a great factory and a public official, a quiet, hopeful man, having but two thoughts, to conceal his name and to sanctify his life, to escape from men and to return to God. But a shadow had fallen across the destiny of Jean Valjean. The shadow of a man in a flat hat and a long coat, a man carrying a stick, Javert. Monsieur Madeleine. Yes. Inspector Javert, the police. Let him come in. Yes, monsieur. This way, Inspector. Monsieur Madeleine. Good morning, Javert. Well, what's the matter? Your Honor, I wish to report a criminal act. Yes, Inspector. An inferior agent of the government has been lacking in respect to a magistrate. It's my duty to bring the fact to your knowledge. Who is this agent? I, monsieur. You, Inspector? I. And who is the magistrate who has to complain of this agent? You, monsieur. I came to ask you to be so kind as to discharge me. Never, this is absurd. You will say that I might tender my resignation. But to resign is honorable. I must be discharged. Javier, what's all this nonsense? Your Honor, I have denounced you. You... You have denounced me? Yes, Your Honor, to the prefecture of police. <laughs> what for, Javert? As a mayor encroaching upon the constabulary? No, monsieur. As an ex-convict. Yes, Javert. For a long time, I suspected you. The resemblance, your immense strength, your skill as a marksman. It's strange, monsieur, but everything points to one fact, that you are a man named Jean Valjean. What name did you say? Jean Valjean. An old convict I saw 20 years ago when I was a galley guard at Toulon. For eight years, his whereabouts have been unknown. Your Honor, I fancied... Well, I've done this thing. Anger determined me, and I denounced you to the prefet. And what answer did you get? That I was mad. Well? They were right. Javert, I'm very lucky that you think so. Yes, Your Honor, it must be so. They found Jean Valjean. What? They've caught him, Your Honor. He's safe in prison. What do you mean, Javert? Who have they caught? Jean Valjean, Your Honor. But of course you wouldn't know. Yes, of course. How do they know he's Jean Valjean? Very simple, Your Honor. He looks like him. Besides, he was recognized by an old galley slave in the jail. How did they catch him? Stealing apples, Your Honor. He called himself Chamatieu. He'd been a pruner and he lived at Favreau. Now, what was Jean Valjean? A pruner. Where? At Favreau. It's very simple, Your Honor. The same age, the same height... When I wrote to the justice, he sent for me and brought me before the man so much you. Well? Your honor, truth is truth. I'm sorry for it, but that man is Jean Valjean. Are you sure of it? Yes, monsieur, I'm sure. And now that I see the real Jean Valjean, your honor, I don't see how I could ever have believed anything else. I beg your pardon. What did this man say to you? No, he's a sly one, this Valjean. That's where I recognize him. He pretends not to understand. He puts on astonishment and plays innocent. But there's evidence. He'll be condemned. Where is he now? At the Assizes at Error. I've been summoned to testify. What's the charge? Stealing apples, Your Honor. Second offense. It's the galleys for life. When's the trial? Tomorrow. When do you leave? Tonight. 
As soon as I've given my testimony, I shall return. How long will the trial last? A day at the longest, Your Honor. I see. Your pardon, monsieur. Yes? I must be discharged. Monsieur Bader, you're a man of honor. You may keep your place. You can't do that. You can't do that to me. Javert, this is a matter which concerns me alone. You can't do it. You're a mayor and a magistrate. You've got to discharge me. I belong to the police. You're respectable. You own property, and I denounced you. Don't you know what that means? You exaggerate your fault, Inspector. I forgive you. You've no right to. I don't want your forgiveness. Your forgiveness, your charity, your kindness. I hate your kindness. The kindness that defends a woman of the town against a citizen, an inferior against a superior, a police agent against the mayor. I hate that kindness. It's easy to be kind. It's hard to be just. If you'd been what I thought you were, I wouldn't have been kind to you, not I, Your Honor. I've said to myself, Javert, you're a hard man, but if you ever trip, look out. Well, I've tripped. I would have broken another man. I must be broken, stripped of my uniform, driven off, disgraced. You've got to do that to me. That's what's right. I demand my discharge. Well, Javert, let me think about it. After all, you may not be as wrong as you think. Give me your hand. Pardon, monsieur. That must not be. The mayor doesn't give his hand to a spy. Your Honor, I will continue in the service until I'm relieved. Now Jean Valjean, called Madeleine, had forgotten a promise. There was a young girl, Fontine. She was sick, and the good mayor had taken her from the streets and given her to the care of an old nun in his hospital. Here, Fontine lay dying. Her only joy, the hope of seeing her child, her little daughter, whom she'd boarded with some innkeepers in another town. Monsieur Madeleine had promised to bring her child to her. Monsieur Madeleine. Monsieur Madeleine. Why don't you answer? There, there, Fontine, my child. Lie back. <coughs> I must have been asleep. Where is he? Where's Monsieur Madeleine? The portress told me he could not come today. Oh, no. But he always comes. Always. Every day he comes here to the hospital to see me. Mademoiselle Fantine, be calm. You must lie down again. Why can't he come, sister? My child, the mayor has gone away. Gone away? Gone away? Yes. I know. He's gone for Cosette. I'm going to see her again. Remember, sister, what he said to me yesterday? Very, very soon, he said. Yes, my child. Oh, I am so happy. Why, well, I feel all well. No pain at all. I'm going to see my child again. Yes, but you mustn't talk anymore. It's been five years since I've seen her. I had to leave her with the innkeepers on the road when she was little. That was all I could do, sister. Because people talk and I, I needed a job to support us. Then there was no work, and I had to do anything to pay for her board. I know. Uh, that's how I got in my trouble. <coughs> but Monsieur Madeleine was good to me. He, he saved me from jail. Uh, he, he's the mayor, and he can do that. And he saved me from that wicked policeman, Javert. And he's taking care of me in my sickness. And now he's gone to get Cosette from the innkeepers. And he'll bring her to me. I'm sure he will. And when Cosette comes... Can she lie by my side in the little bed? Uh, you let her do that, won't you? Yes, my child. Good night. Then when she wakes, I can say good morning to her. And at night when I'm awake, I can hear her sleep. Her little breathing is so sweet. Good night, my child. Good night, sister. Look, there's just room. <laughs> There is one spectacle grander than the sea. That is the sky. There is one spectacle grander than the sky. That is the soul. Let us look into a soul. The soul of Jean Valjean called Madeleine, the mayor of Montreux. Jean Valjean, 
I gave you the candlesticks that you stole from me. I have purchased your soul. I withdraw it from perversity, and I give it to Almighty God. I was wrong about you. They've got Jean Valjean. They're trying him tomorrow. It's the galleys for life. They've got Jean Valjean. Even while listening to the words of Javert, the first impulse of Jean Valjean was to drag this poor man out of prison and put himself in his place. An impulse as painful and sharp as an incision in the living flesh. But this impulse passed away. Well? Well, what am I afraid of? This Javert who's troubled me... That fearful instinct which follows me, that terrible bloodhound, is baffled. He's satisfied. He'll leave me in quiet. He holds his Jean Valjean fast. And I have nothing to do with it. Why interfere? It doesn't concern me. I've brought happiness to this place. I've done some good... It is God's will that I do more. One can no more prevent the mind from returning to an idea than one can prevent the sea from coming to the shore. In the case of the sailor, this is called the tide. In the case of the guilty, this is called remorse. Fontaine. Fontaine. Remember Fontaine. That poor lonely woman who longs for her child. What of her? I have promised this mother her child. Who'll keep the promise? Well. Well. This man goes to the galleys. What of it? He's stolen. Why say he hasn't stolen? He's stolen. And for me, I remain here. I go on. And this mother brings up her child, and the whole country is rich and happy and honest. I am Madeline. Woe to him who is Valjean. I do not recognize the man. Jean Valjean. Jean Valjean. Behold yourself, Jean Valjean. An honored man. The mayor of the city. The rich man who feeds the poor. The happy man who is admired. Jean Valjean. There shall be a man wearing your red blouse and bearing your name and dragging your chain in the galleys. So struggled this unhappy soul. So struggled 1,800 years before him another. He also while the olive trees were shivering in the fierce breath of the infinite, long put away the fearful chalice, dripping with shadow and running over with darkness in the star-filled depths. Who is it? I, Monsieur Madeleine. Well, what is it? Monsieur Madeleine, it is just fine. What's that to me? It's the cart, monsieur. What cart? Did not monsieur order a horse and cart? No. The driver says he has cut for you. Monsieur Madeleine. Monsieur Madeleine, what shall I say? Say, say it's all right. Say I'm coming. At daybreak, 
Jean Valjean was in the open country. The roads were bad from Montreux to Arras. When he got to the courthouse, it was night. Monsieur Madeleine. Yes? Oh, Your Honor, you should have told me straight off that you're the mayor of Montreux. A place has been made for you on the bench, Your Honor. The judge begs you to enter. Thank you. Not at all, Your Honor. You've only to turn the brass knob of that door and you'll find yourself in the courtroom. Good evening, monsieur. Jean Valjean was alone. He stared at the door to the courtroom. He drew breath and listened. There was no sound. He waited there, listening. The same silence. He leaned against the wall. The stone was cold. He closed his eyes. Jean Valjean, there shall be a man bearing your name and dragging your chain in the galleys. He opened his eyes. The first thing he saw was the handle of that door. The door to the courtroom. That round, polished, brass handle... It shone there before him like a star. Then, suddenly, he was in the courtroom. Monsieur Madeleine? Yes, Excellency. That's my name. Your note was sent in to me, monsieur. Permit me to say that your presence in this court is an unexpected compliment. Thank you. I have not had the pleasure of your honor's acquaintance, but we all know, by reputation at least, Monsieur Madeleine... The distinguished mayor of Montreux. Uh, when you sit here, Monsieur Madeleine. We will resume the trial of Jean Valjean. He did not need to look for him. He saw him. This was the man. He thought he saw himself, older. But just as he'd looked, everything as it was... Eight years before, early in October 1815, when he left the galleys and entered the little town of D. He thought he saw his trial, his trial, played by his shadow. Judges, clerks, gendarmes, a throng of heads. He'd seen all this before, 27 years before when Jean Valjean was tried by law for stealing a loaf of bread. We will resume the trial of Jean Valjean. Monsieur Madeleine, the prisoner is accused of stealing ripe apples. <laughs> Your Excellency, the judge. Your Honor, Monsieur Madeleine. Gentlemen of the jury, who is this man? Gentlemen, we have here no petty truth thief, no mere trespasser. We have here an outlaw, a murderous galley slave. We have here Jean Valjean. This man is accused of one crime for which he is on trial, but he is wanted for another. Highway robbery committed for the gain of one penny from a small boy encountered in the fields outside of D. Convict him for the new crime, and he shall be tried again for the first. Prisoner, on your own behalf, have you anything to say? No, Excellency. No, I, I didn't do it, that's all I... I never stole anything. I'm a man who doesn't get something to eat every day. I picked off the ground things that were there. That's all I did. You see, Monsieur Madeleine, there's no question of the identity. This man is obviously Jean Valjean. Has the prisoner no witnesses? May I question him? Oh, certainly, Monsieur. Thank you. Monsieur Chamature, how long have you been a pruner? His honor is speaking to you, prisoner. Reply to him. I don't know, monsieur. I've been a pruner for a long time. Before that, I was a wheelwright. Yes, I, I was a wheelwright in Paris. I, I earned 30 sous a day. Look here. I'm telling the truth. You have only to ask if it isn't so. Ask how stupid I am. Ask anybody. <laughs> ask! I don't know what you want of me. <laughs> Your Excellency, I beg leave to call out at this time three witnesses. Brevet, Chenel Dieu, They are convicts 
They have been in the galleys with the accused. Permission granted. Call the first witness. Convict Breve. Convict Breve. Yes, sir. Come forward. Convict Breve, you have suffered infamous punishment and cannot take the oath. Prisoner Champertier, rise. Rise, prisoner. Breve, look upon the prisoner. Say on your soul and conscience whether you still recognize this man as your former fellow convict, Jean Valjean. Your Excellency, I remember him. Sit down, Breve. <laughs> Prisoner remains standing. Call out the galley slave, Chenelieu. Convict, Chenelieu. Yes, Your Excellency. Think carefully. Do you recognize this man? Recognize him? We were on the same chain together. What's wrong, Jack? Don't you remember me? Sit down, prisoner. Convict, push by. Do you identify the man before you? That's 24601. Jean Valjean, his name was. Commissaire, you have heard the testimony of these witnesses. Have you anything to say? I say they're liars! Officers, in force order! I am about to pronounce sentence on this man. One moment! Order. Your Excellency! Order. Your Excellency! May I be permitted a few words on behalf of the accused? I'd like to tell you about Jean Valjean. Mr. Madeleine, you're a man of high office. I must grant your request. Excellency, they were right when they told you that Jean Valjean was an outlaw. It's true he was a galley slave. The convicts are right. Nineteen years he was chained between Cochepai and Old Shawnee Dew. Nineteen long years. It's true he was a criminal. The pennies were stolen and the loaf of bread. And the bishop was robbed. But mark you, gentlemen, the galleys make the galleys slave. Before the galleys, this man was a poor peasant, an idiot. He was changed in the galleys. He was stupid. He was made wicked. He was a log. He became a firebrand. He was saved later by indulgence and kindness as he was lost by severity. You won't understand this. There are some things which cannot be told. I cannot relate to you the story of Jean Valjean's life. Someday you will know it. He's done what he could. He's disguised himself under another name. He is desired to enter again among honest men. It seems this cannot be. Gentlemen, your prisoner is not he who is on trial before you. Release this man. He is innocent. What is done at this moment, God beholds from on high. This man is no convict, no outlaw, no thief. Gentlemen, I am Jean Valjean. Monsieur Madeleine is not well, officer. See his honor to my chamber. You don't believe me. Revy, son of you, close by, look at me. Do you recognize me? Do you know who I am? Revy, answer me. Yes, Your Honor. Hello, 23709. Son of you, number 21808. Your left shoulder still scarred from a burn. Answer me, is that true? Yes, monsieur, it's true. Close by, number 24302. There's a date in blue letters on your left arm. March 1st, 1815. Lift up your sleeve. March 1st, 1815. <laughs> Gentlemen, you see clearly. I am Jean Valjean. You may arrest me when you choose. Good night, gentlemen. Official order delivered under seal. Inspector Javert will seize the body of Monsieur Madeleine, the mayor of Montreux, who has this day been identified in court as the discharged convict and criminal Jean Valjean. Sister, let me in. Your hair. Your hair, monsieur, is all white. Alphonsine, can I see her? Oh, have you brought back her child? Oh, monsieur, she is asleep. I must see her tonight now. There's no time. Monsieur Madeleine. Oh, you have awakened mm. her. My dear little Fontaine. I knew you were there. I was asleep, but I saw you. I followed you with my eyes the whole night. Tell me, where is my Cosette? Sister... You said I might have her in a little bed beside me. Not yet, my child. You still have some fever. We must cure you first. But I'm cured. Let me see my Cosette. Isn't it natural I should want to see my child when you've been to all that trouble to get her? 
If you bring her in to see me now, I'll speak very gently. It is better to wait, Fantine. Oh, oh monsieur. Only tell me, how is she? She may not know me. Children have no memories. They're like birds. You must be cold, Monsieur Madeleine, after that trip in the carriage. Oh, could they not bring her here for one... Cosette is well. Cosette is beautiful. You'll see her soon. But be quiet. Do you hear me, Fontaine? What's wrong with you, child? Monsieur. He has come for me. The policeman. Fontaine. What are you looking at? Inspector Javert. Well, Jean Valjean. I know what he wants, child. It's not for you that he comes. Come on, Jean Valjean. Monsieur Madeleine. Monsieur Madeleine, save me. There's no Madeleine here. There is Jean Valjean. One moment, Javert. Call me, Inspector. Inspector, I'd like a word with you in private. Speak aloud. People speak aloud to me. Monsieur Madeleine. It's a request I have to make to you. Speak aloud, I tell you. Inspector, this is not to be heard by anyone but yourself. What's that to me? My Cosette. Cosette. I'll never see her. Listen to me. You've got to. You're human. Give me just three days, three days to go for the child of this woman. You're clever, Jean Valjean. I'll say that for you. You asked me for three days to get away, and you tell me you're going for a child. Going for a child? My child? Cosette? Then she's not here. Monsieur Madeleine, where is Cosette? I want my child. My Cosette. Monsieur Madeleine. Hold your tongue, husband. I want my child. Miserable country where galley slaves are magistrates and women of the town are nursed like countesses. All this will be changed. Monsieur Madeleine! I tell you, there is no Madeleine. There is a robber. There is a brigand. There is a convict. There is Jean Valjean. And I've got him. Don't be afraid, little Fontaine. 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 Fontaine! What's wrong with her sister? Requiem aeternum dona eis. Come on. Come on. What's wrong with her? And you see the woman is dead. I am at your disposal. Requiem aeternum dona eis domine et. Tonight, WOR and the Mutual Network have brought you part three of Victor Hugo's absorbing masterpiece, Les Miserables, the episode which pictured the death of Fontaine and the capture of the supposed Jean Valjean. Orson Welles played the roles of both the real and the supposed Valjean, and was also heard reading the narrative passages of this presentation, which he has made especially for radio. Assisting Mr. Welles were Martin Gable as Javert, Alice Frost as Fontaine, Ray Collins, Adelaide Klein, William Johnstone, and Hiram Sherman. The orchestra was under the direction of Milton Catons, who arranged the score. Next Friday evening, at 10 o'clock, we shall present Les Miserables in its fourth chapter, the episode which is called Cosette. This is the Coast to Coast Network of the Mutual Broadcasting System.